What's up, everybody? My name is Lehua, and welcome to the Superfina channel. I am a Hawaii variety content creator, host the podcast Across Worlds, and I stream on twitch.tv slash Superfina. Today, we are reviewing Tsukimichi, and if you like anime reviews, don't forget to subscribe, ring the bell, so you can be notified on the next upload. And if you would like to support the channel, we got Patreon and channel membership. Link to those are below. We are reviewing Tsukimichi episode 5, and this episode was a little bit more on world building. Like before, we saw some monsters, non-human creatures this one we're seeing more humans and what it's like for adventures and such we're going to do some recap and then we're going to point things out that were interesting to us what happened in the episode it was pretty much a post of town Tetsuya's destruction from tomoe's and meals uh competition that's what makota called it competition and they took in the adventurers that they saved from the corrupted people. There were corrupted adventurers that were making people get in debt, and then they were enslaving them and whatever. Oh, and they were doing some magic experimentation too. Well, that was interesting. I wonder if we're going to see more of that. Anyways, they saved some adventurers. So in their wagon, they went to... Sige. Sige is the next big place to go to. It has like a merchant guild, it has an adventurer guild, etc, etc. And on the way to Sige, they are fighting creatures and they're taking the body parts. And um, Tomoe, she's not there. Makoto kind of manipulated her into thinking that she needs to train on her own and such. Like as a way of a samurai. So she's not in the picture. And then um, Makoto and Mio, they visit the demi plane. We see the development there. We see how the other species are working together, building this civilization. And then we see what the dwarves are making, new equipment and whatnot. Then it comes to a scene where they're in Sige, they get their registration. Makoto found a like type of quest, a special quest for ruby eyes, which is what they acquire from the creatures that they fought during the trip to Sige. And then at the end of the episode, it shows the person who is asking for the ruby eyes and he tells Makoto that he was doing everything wrong. And that was the end of it. The recap sounds short, but every part was kind of expanded with explanations and whatnot even with the adventures the parts that i found interesting in this episode were one tomoe was able to manipulate the memories of the adventures they saved except for toa and her sister them they left alone but it just made me think that tomoe can manipulate anyone's memories so whatever situation they get they can get out of it then during the trip to sige when they were fighting their creatures and such I like how in this episode they showed Mio how she fought in front of the adventures and such. It was kind of, I want to say it was small. It wasn't extravagant like what they did in Tetsuya. It was more very, it was very um, feminine. It was graceful and such because all she did was move her fan and she was like, hey, and the creatures were done. It was awesome. But then the adventurers were like, oh, please don't destroy certain parts. This is where it leads to world building. So they're adventurers, right? And they see the value of these creatures' parts so they can sell it at the guild or other establishments and get money. So it got to a point where if Mia was fighting, they're like, oh, please don't destroy the head. Please don't destroy the wings. Please don't destroy this and that. And then Mia got upset. She's like, this is too much work <laughs> and that was really funny and i don't blame her i mean she was just asked to like get rid of the creatures and they're making all these demands but then these adventures this is their livelihood they're like we need money okay we just got out of like this weird slaving thing like we need to have a life again so if we think about that you know these parts are important for them and can we talk about how they get the parts? This episode was making it so realistic on how they debone or how they like take out the parts of the creatures. It was really realistic. I like how they show like there's like a dagger and there are cutting parts and there was like blood splatter. It was pretty accurate and it it's not pretty. 
it really isn't in some isekais they just have the creatures disintegrate and there you go there's the parts or there is the core or whatever loot they leave behind and others like goblin slayer they make it gruesome and i like that it's like yes please show me these details i appreciate it in the last episode we saw mostly tomoe and mio fighting and such we saw action from them this episode we saw a little bit of makoto we got to see him use his archery skills and it was it wasn't like amazing like there wasn't special effects but just seeing the actions and how much control and accuracy he had that was amazing i was like yay and then the other adventurers they were just like shocked because he's a level one adventure right and they were not expecting this at all and i was just like so proud of makoto i have like an attachment for him anyone that looks down on it i'm like mm, you go see watch and when he proves them wrong i'm like yeah we told you we told you mm, mm. and then finally when they get to sige they do their registrations they get all their things done and makoto he gets an adventure card and they show this really cool thing where Toa showed her adventure card and then there was Makoto's and they were able to exchange contact and there's so much benefits just from this adventure card it looked like a tablet or a phone and such but instead of seeing like a screen on our devices it just has like a little pop-up screen and this is very isekai very RPG but tweaked a little and I like that it was a lot more detail than I expected, giving us more of this world. And I'm just wondering who invented this magic? Who invented this magical technology for these adventure cards? I would love to see or learn about the history of this stuff. Like, there must have been someone who was a genius and gifted this knowledge to the people of this world. I'm just wondering how gifted they are and where they came from because this is really advanced stuff and speaking of people the adventurers we got to learn more about them like toy she's actually a dark thief i didn't think she was a dark thief i thought she was like something else and i'm thinking why are you a dark thief what happened how did you get there the elf she's a blessed gunner which i was surprised by i thought she would be like more of an archer but instead of like you know stereotypical elf class job thing they gave her a different range class a blessed gunner that's really interesting then we have a dwarf that's a priest knight i was not expecting that you know i wouldn't be surprised by tank but it's a priest knight and i'm like wondering how did you become a priest knight and we got a human who's an alchemist and that gave me the idea that there's going to be some alchemy potions making especially after we learn about monster parts and such and i'm just wondering if tomoe and mio and makoto are going to be put in different classes and what type of classes like we know that tomoe is a samurai but what about the others and the last part I want to talk about is when Makoto then went back to the Demi Plains. The dwarves, they were filled with craftsmanship, passion. They made all types of equipment and such. But Makoto has no use of them. So I'm wondering what they're going to do with those. And what are the dwarves going to make if Makoto doesn't need equipment and such. There's actually one dwarf that made something that Makoto liked. And... That was the mana energy sucking equipment because, you know, Makoto, he emits too much. And when he emits too much, he looks like a demon, a demon lord and whatnot. So this equipment is awesome. Instead of just wearing rings, Makoto can wear a whole gear. And it's perfect for him because there's like defense and offense. It's pretty flashy because it changes colors and whatnot. But that's not what I want to really talk about. I really want to talk about what the dwarves are going to do with all that passion for craftsmanship. It's like, what are they going to apply that on? What are they going to make? Are they just going to make new technology based off Makoto's memories or what? I'm excited for this demiplane era. I'm wondering how this civilization is going to look later on in the season. 
And that's my review for Tsukimichi episode 5. If there's anything that I missed and you wanted to have be mentioned in the video, please let me know in the comments below. And if you haven't seen the episode, what is your impression from this video? If you want to talk outside of YouTube, there's a Discord link is in the description. I also stream on twitch.tv slash Superfina. People watch these videos, do like to stop by the stream. Outside of YouTube and Twitch, I host podcasts across worlds where we talk about anime, manga, and other things you're interested in. If you like podcasts like that, link to the podcast is in the description. We're available on all platforms. Other than that, my name is Lehua, and this is the Superfina channel reviewing Tsukimichi episode 5. Hope you guys like this video and I'll see you on the next one. Laters! Huge thanks to my Patreons and channel members for making this video possible. If you also want to be part of the Superfina party, you can click over here or become a channel member. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the next video. And I do stream live on Twitch every Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Hope to see you guys there and I will see you on the next video. This bump.